I have a really busy day today, but I'm getting started early this morning in the kitchen just to make something to go with supper. Thankfully, I have leftover chicken that I can use to go with this. I had a roast chicken yesterday, so what we had for supper. And I had potatoes and carrots and onions around it, but somehow we ate most of them. I must not have put enough in. So I'm gonna make this casserole so that I have something to go with the chicken. And it's really an easy casserole to whip up. It's one of my very favorite ones to make because it's so simple and you can vary it depending on what you have coming in from the garden or what you appreciate, what you like most. But it is perfect to use the thing straight out of the garden. Now, I learned about this recipe many years ago. One of my Blind Pig and the Acorn readers, B. Ruth is her name, she taught me how to make this and I've been making it ever since. It is so good. And it's so easy, like I said, to put together that you really don't have to think about it after you learn the first, first go round of making it. And then you can kind of just tweak it to what you prefer or what you have, like I said, on hand that come out of your garden or from the local store or the market. So first I'm gonna go over kind of the ingredients that I use. So I use kind of what she suggested in the beginning. That's just kind of what I like. Over the years I have added other things, but, but mostly I use zucchini, onions, tomatoes, mozzarella cheese, butter, and you either need cracker or breadcrumbs. I've used, like I've crunched up Ritz crackers and used them before. I used, I've used breadcrumbs that I've made. I've used various things and it all turned out very well. Now for the seasoning, I usually just use salt and pepper, but again, you could use oregano would be great, garlic powder, anything that you prefer, um, kind of your palate prefers, that, that would be great in this also. So to put the casserole together, it's very simple. All you do is layer it again in whatever dish you want to use. I usually use one of my bread pans, but you can use a casserole dish, whatever you prefer. And an another great thing about being able to kind of mold it to what you prefer is that you can make a little bit or a whole lot. Now tonight it'll only be me and Matt eating, so I'm just gonna make this one little casserole dish and that'll be plenty for both of us both of us to eat. So, But if you wanna make more than that, you certainly could. So I'm gonna start out by layering my zucchini in the bottom. And if you wanna get a really good layer, I might have to like, kinda of cut some of mine in half to fill in, the, fill in the edges there. It really won't matter once it's cooked. Whoops. So then on top of the zucchini, I'm gonna, I've got some onion sliced up, some onion that come out of our garden that we grew this year. And I'm gonna lay some onion slices in there. I may, I may not have cut enough. I may have to go back for a little bit extra if I run out. And then I have some of our tomatoes. Our tomatoes are on the way out, but I still have a few outside growing. So I, I've got a few. I've got another one right over here if I need to get it. And you could also use uh, canned tomatoes if you don't have fresh tomatoes. Now on top of that, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna season to taste with salt and pepper. Again, you could put whatever you prefer, would be wonderful. And then I'm gonna add some of the cheese. I'm gonna add some, some Gouda, a little bit of it, and then some, a little bit of Parmesan too. And then I'm gonna start all over with my next layer, just with my, laying my zucchini slices in there that one cut. Let's see. Let's do the onion. Add some tomatoes. some cheese. I'm gonna put some butter. I should have, I can't remember, did I put butter on the first layer? If I didn't, I should have put some butter, but this will be okay. Again, it's almost foolproof. You can't really mess it up. I'm gonna throw some butter down in, in the cracks there. Add a little bit of Parmesan. So mine's getting pretty high, but I'm gonna try for one more layer.
really love the tomato in it and I'm going to run out. So I'm going to grab my tomato over here and get me a slice or two of it. Be so good. Okay. Now I'm gonna put me some cheese. I'm I'm really coming out the top here. You could do two layers if you if you don't want to to do as many as I did, or if you want to use a bigger bigger dish. I guess I'm living on the wild side today. Okay, now that I've got that, I'm going to put a little bit more butter down in there. A little bit on top here. And now I'm going to sprinkle some breadcrumbs on top. So again, if you wanted to use um, cracker crumbs, any kind of bread crumbs. This is just what I had in the cabinet today. I usually do use Ritz crackers. I think they're really good on it, but I don't have any today. I'm going to have to press mine down to get a get my layer of crumbs. Mm. So it kind of gets, everything inside gets so moist down in there and, and just so tasty. And then also on top, you have kind of a little bit of a crunch. And it just, it, personal preference again, if you want to, ever how many crumbs you want to use. You may think I'm using too many, but I really like the little crunch. Or you may not even want, you wouldn't even have to put crumbs on it. Like if you're uh, gluten-free, you could just leave them off. I think it'd still be really good. Okay, now on top of that, I'm going to put just a few more little pats of butter just to help it crisp up. Okay, now that we've got everything in there, we're going to cover it. I've got the oven preheated to 375. We're going to cook it for 30 minutes, and I'm going to cover it with full. And since I got mine so full of the actual casserole, I'm going to put some little toothpicks just to prevent the full from actually laying on top there. I, might, I think I might should, have, might should break my toothpicks in two there just to keep them up a little, not make them so short. I mean, make them so tall. You have to be careful and make sure you get them out, though. Nobody wants to eat a toothpick. Okay, now that I've got the foil on, after it bakes for 30 minutes, I'm going to take the, the foil off, and then I'm going to let it cook for about 15 to 20 more minutes just to kind of make sure all the vegetables are done and also kind of crisp up the crumbs a little bit. Of course, at any time during the baking, if you want to take a knife and pierce the vegetables and, and see if they're tender to your liking, you could do that. Your oven may be different than mine, so it may take slightly less or even slightly longer. But I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. Okay, now that I've got the casserole in the oven, Corey's back helping me with the apples. I'm going to clean up my mess. So I had a little bit of butter left over. So when that happens, I just put it in a little container, put a lid on it, put it in the refrigerator. And even if I don't use this for, uh, you know, if I'm making another recipe that I need little butter pats, I'll just use it to fry an egg or whatever it is that I'm doing. And as far as the leftover zucchini and the one slice of tomato, there's hardly any tomato left, maybe a slice and onions. I think me and Corey, that's what we'll have for our dinner. So we'll make us a little quick salad. I'm just going to get a very little bit out since I'm going to be eating it for supper. Oh, I may need to help myself. Here. I don't know. I'm making a mess. <laughs> Woo! There. Okay. 
Okay, it's been just cooling just a little bit, but um, I'm, I couldn't resist. I have to taste it for you so that you can see what it's like. Mm, still hot. Mm. Somehow all the flavors of the cheese and the tomatoes and the zucchini just go so well together. Mm, and the onions. Mm. Hard to say which is my favorite part. So good. So versatile too. The sky's the limit depending on what you want to put in it. What kind of cheese, what kind of vegetables. Up to you to kind of how done you want them. You could cook it a long time and get them really really mush, you know, into a mushy state. I kind of like mine still with a little bit of crunch, but that's just personal preference. The great thing, another great thing about it is that it reheats very well. So like when I reheat it this afternoon, it'll be fine for, for Matt to eat, which he's not picky anyway. He likes leftovers, but it does reheat nicely. Sometimes I would, when I worked at the college and I had to pack a lunch every day, pack my dinner, I would make one of these and then I would take a little bit of it each day to work and maybe take a cucumber out of the garden and that made the the perfect little dinner. We had a microwave so I could I could heat it up. So it's one that heats up nicely too, that reheats nicely. And you can make as I like it that you can make it as small or as big as you need to with what you have on hand. It's just one of those go-to recipes. I'm so thankful that B Ruth shared it with me all those years ago. So I hope that you enjoyed seeing how to make B. Ruth's uh, zucchini casserole. That's what I think of it in my mind when I make it every summer. Summer's mostly of the time when I make it. I don't really make it during the winter. But it's one of those standards that I make every summer since she taught me how. Um, and it's just a wonderful treat if you grow a garden or if you visit the market or even if you visit the grocery store to, to get to utilize that fresh produce. It's just a great thing to do with it. As always, I hope you'll drop back by often to help me celebrate Appalachia, which is a whole lot of good eating, a whole lot of good food ways, and many of them that are, that are kind of passed down through the generations and shared with friends.